I thought I would uh, do the guys a favor and brush hog a pathway to uh, one of the deer blinds out here because, you know, it's the time to do it. And apparently we uh, lost the brush hog somehow. or something whacks me. All right, I finally wrestled the brush hog away from Eric. Actually, he went to go work on his lawnmower, so we're going to clean up the pasture. It is very overgrown. Usually, it's not like this, unless it's springtime, but I have not had time to go through and mow it, so it's a disaster. So we're gonna get this cleaned up and uh, get this little guy running back here. There we go. Stuff is as tall as me through here. Oh my goodness. Well, okay, so it was as tall as me. Now it's micro tall. cutting the hay field and actually here it is now actually looking at it right now it doesn't look too bad um maybe I should get out and walk it first before I decide to brush hog it pretty much what we did with the other hay field when it was starting to grow in we went through I went through and brush hogged it several times to knock back the weeds and it works um, I haven't been back to look at it yet this year. Maybe I should really quit today, but uh, I haven't seen too much for Queens and Lace. Let's go out and take a look at this. Okay, so we've got some uh, strange wild grasses growing. I believe this is side oats grama, but I'm not sure. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a, a native grass. And then, like I said, I think it's called side oats grama because it looks like oats hanging off the side. But I could be wrong. There's a lot of it, and honestly, if that stuff wants to grow, I really don't care. It can grow to its heart content. Um, this, you can see, this is all the orchard grass trying to grow in, and it's, man, it's really coming up a lot better. I did go through and fertilize it, and maybe that's kind of what helped it. I don't know. So this area obviously has a lot less grass. Uh, I don't think I can see any grass actually. Oh, there's a little bit. Just a little bit in there. <sighs> so this definitely needs some help through here. So we've got half the field up there growing great. This is the lower portion of the field, so this has been underwater for a good portion of the year. You can see it still it just looks yellow. It looks like it's struggling. But the ground is pretty dry. We haven't had rain in quite a while. This just isn't very good ground for a hay field, I don't think. It's gonna take some work to get it growing. Just maybe, we might be able to get 
when cutting out of this this fall and if not then i'll just go through and brush hog it again fertilize it real well in the fall and then hopefully springtime we can have some hay but that brings me to question number two all of these new fields we planted when we planted them they were very very wet there was nothing we can do it was a crappy year for planting so how can we go about making our fields smoother again without going through and killing off the entire field and redoing the whole thing because realistically you can run into the same issue of being stuck with rain again so i was kind of thinking maybe going over it lightly with a disc and then i don't know beating it a little bit smoothing it back out and maybe packing it as far as this goes i'm going to cut this puppy down get through here I'm half tempted to just leave this and then bail it up in the fall I don't know I mean yeah there's a lot of weeds but um, I guess I don't know it's a tough call it's tough all right let's go look down here and see what the rest of the field looks like this you can see it's just just grasses it's native grasses wet grasses and this field connects into that one, so maybe I should just brush hog a pathway down the center. Uh-oh, there's some pink clover. That's a clover. Actually, it's kind of funny, because look at the look at the strip of the field. It's like, there's clover here, and then there's native grasses, and then there's clover. It's almost like it was, like, planted with clover. Strange, so strange. Maybe it's just how I fertilized it. I don't know. And then here's like a whole chunk that's just all that crappy weed stuff. 
So this is weeds and grass and clover. Um, see, these are the weeds that I don't want to reseed in my hayfield. These are the things that I need to cut out as an annual. So um, if I cut it out, it will not grow back. But if it goes to seed, then it will. One thing I'm not seeing is Queen's Anne lace. I spent two different passes last year cutting Queen's Anne lace out of this field, sacrificing all of my hay. And it paid off, guys. No weed killer, just cutting it. Uh, I noticed, like, because I always look backwards when I'm doing this, and I noticed it was kind of like swiveling back and forth. I'm like, what is going on? Why is it doing that? And uh, I see the three point arm is ripped off. So, step one is raise it up, hopefully. Maybe not. Hmm. Well, I guess I can carefully try to drive it backwards and out. Not have had to do this before. Um, ideally, you don't want to be going backwards with this thing because obviously I don't I don't know how well it's gonna go backwards it's gonna be hard to steer gosh Gosh, yep, that was definitely completely gone. Well, I guess first, let me get this out of the way. Okay, that is satiated. This, gosh, unless I can just find some place to drive forward and out of here. There's really only one way into this area because there's a creek that runs through here and this is it. However, it's dry enough, maybe I can sneak out the back. I think I can pull this and it'll be okay. I think the hard part is just backing up. Anyway, I'm gonna try and come out right through here. Hopefully it's dry enough, there shouldn't be anything there. I just don't know how many depths are gonna be down in there. And I'm not sure like what that thing can handle. All right, so far so good. Um, it's just chilling out on the ground right there. Okay, scream if something falls off, please. I'm just making my own path through here. Oh gosh, I really hope there's no ditch. I hope there's no ditch! Okay. Uh, like I said, there's a ditch over here and I can't back up. Oh my gosh. I really... Uh, away. Uh, okay, get back up here. Thank you, Lord. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if that, I mean, it seemed like nothing, but literally, if I got tips too far sideways, the logical thing to do is back up and pull out of there and, you know, reorient yourself until you can find level ground, but I kind of can't back up with this thing on the back. So, yeah. Fortunately, well, um, as far as this, this is very fixable. At least it appears to be very fixable. It's a bolt, so um, yeah, the pins and stuff, I'm gonna have to get new ones, but I don't know. All right, so we got a new bolt and nut for that and get that back together. Uh, the linkage right here we pulled off from the box blade. And uh, the other thing is the wheel was having issues. So Eric went for the second time and welded it, but this time he welded it at work. This part had completely come off. Um, so he welded it, so we spray painted that, and then we're gonna slip that back up in the, I don't know, is it the axle hub? What do you even call that? 
Wheel hub, maybe? Wheel hub. Thank you.